not the only one. Make sure we're on the live. Hallelujah. Everything's working the right way in Jesus' mighty name. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Welcome, welcome those who are tuning in. For those that know, you guys can find our channel at Sam and Rodriguez Ministries. We're on YouTube. We're on Facebook. By next week, we'll have a state-of-the-art uh, website coming for House of Prayer. Someone shout amen. So God is on the move. Someone shout amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. How many are happy to see your family members here on Easter Sunday? Someone shout amen. Give a big round of applause. We're happy to have you in the house of God in Jesus' mighty name. I remember when I was younger, hallelujah. Can you imagine by, the, by next year I'm turning 30 years old? Oh, my God, hallelujah. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. I gave my life to the Lord at, at the age of 21 years old. Someone shout amen. Hallelujah. I remember one day I was preaching hard, hallelujah, on a Sunday morning. We had two people and that Sunday service. And as I was preaching, the devil said to me, this is what you gave up that, that good life for, to preach to these two jacked up jokers that are running you rampant and running you crazy? Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me? Well, now that I look around, I see families in the house. I see those who I used to go to Bible study with. Those who we used to have youth services with. I see them in the house of God. God is faithful. He's faithful. Someone shout amen. He's faithful. He's faithful. And you know what God is doing in this year? He's, he's bringing back the prodigals. Someone shout amen. He's bringing back the prodigals in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I remember, hallelujah, the only time I'd come to church when I was running away from God was when my mom me agarraba de los oídos. Vente para la iglesia. You got to come to church. Someone shout amen. There was a pastor that preached this. He used to, and I'll go into the word of God. He, he preached this one time that when he was younger, hallelujah, on a Sunday, he goes to his mom and he says, Ama, mom, I don't feel like going to church today. He was a pastor now. I don't feel like going to church today. And, and the, mom looks at him, the mom looks at him and says, Mijo, that's okay. And when she, when, when, when she said that's okay, his, 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 uh, the, the boy's eyes lit up. Someone shout amen. Finally, my mom is going to let me, hallelujah, not go to church. She said, that's okay that you don't want to go to church. But, hallelujah, you're still going to go to church. Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me, hallelujah? She said, why? Because God is going to see that you may not want to go to church, but you still came to church. So that's a greater sacrifice, someone shout amen. He's pleased with that sacrifice, someone shout amen. And you know what the mother did? He got him. And that boy that didn't want to go to church is now pastoring a church of over 3,000 people. Someone shout amen. So mamas, hallelujah, hallelujah, los oídos, someone shout amen. People tell me, Pastor Sam, you got some big old ears, hallelujah. It's because I would have my father tug me from this side, my mother from that side, hallelujah. And then when I got saved, I said, I got to stop listening to man. I got to listen to God. So God started tugging on my ear. Someone shout amen, hallelujah. But I say that to say this, I'm so happy to see everyone's face here this Sunday morning. And I believe that it's not just going to be full on Easter Sunday. We're going to close that door, hallelujah, in the mighty name of Jesus. But every Wednesday, every Sunday, we're going to have this place packed. Someone shout amen. How many here believe it are with me in the mighty name of Jesus? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The leaders are ready. We're ready in Jesus' mighty name. Turn your Bibles, church, to the book of Mark, chapter 16. Mark, chapter 16, verse 1 through 8. This is the first time I preach. I preach, hallelujah, this Resurrection Sunday the way I preached it. I'm going to preach it right now to you in Jesus' name. Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me? Hallelujah. The title of the sermon this morning is Go Tell the One Who Is Hurting. He is risen. Someone shout amen. Go tell the one who is hurting that he is risen. Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me? Go tell the one who is hurting, who is broken. Go tell the backslider. Go tell the one that hasn't been in church all year that he is risen. Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me? Hallelujah. That he is alive, that he's no longer dead. Hallelujah. That he is sitting at the right hand of the Father, that what he promised, 
he was going to do, he fulfilled this promise. Someone shout amen. I serve a God that God says he's not a man that he can lie. Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And that leads me to Mark chapter 16, verse 1 through 8. Amen. The rule here in the church is if you shout the house down and shout amen, I'll get you guys out of here quicker. Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me? Hallelujah. The quieter you are, the longer I'm going to take to preach this thing. Someone shout amen. Are y'all, okay, I'm moving now. Someone shout amen. Hallelujah. The church should be alive. Someone shout amen. You know where you'll find peace and quiet? In the cemetery. Are y'all with me? You're not going to hear no dancing, no shouting. Or no rejoicing. Why? Because in the cemetery is full of dead people. But you and I are alive in Jesus' mighty name. We are alive in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Death could not hold them. Oh, death, where is your sting in Jesus' mighty name? The condemnation, the death that was placed upon us, he paid the price for you and I. I'm alive in Jesus' mighty name. When I go to preach, when I go to pray for people in the hospital who are in hospice, hallelujah, who are in their last days, they can barely speak. Someone shout amen. I want to go pray for an elderly, hallelujah. She says, Pastor, I want to shout amen, but I can't, hallelujah. I said, just shout amen. Someone shout amen. And you and I, we have all the strength, all the anointing. We're healed. We're restored. We ought to be loud in the presence of God. Someone shout amen. I'm alive. Someone got to shout. I got my children in the house. I got my mama in the house. I got my swagger in the house. He's alive. Someone shout amen. My God. I'll tell you right now if. If Jesus can resurrect, hallelujah, he is written, amen. He can touch your swag of those hearts. I'll tell you that right now, someone shout amen. That's a little inside joke, someone shout amen. Mark chapter 16, verse 1 in Jesus' mighty name. The word of God says this, when the Sabbath was over, when the Sabbath was what? Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Solomon, bought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus' body. Someone shout amen. So here we see when the Sabbath is over, the party is over, Passover is over. They're not just resting, hallelujah. They're going out to go find Jesus, someone shout amen. Are y'all with me, hallelujah? Verse 2, it says, very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb. Verse 3, and, and they asked each other, who will roll the stone away? Someone shout amen. What were they asking each other? They're asking each other, like if they're going to, like if any of them could roll that big old stone away. Someone shout amen. Like if they're Mrs. Olympia, no, that, that, that's impossible. Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me? Hallelujah. So the only thing on their mind, on their way to find Jesus is not how, hallelujah, how much spices and how much oils are we going to place on their bodies. They're talking about how are we going to move this big old thing. Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me? And sometimes, hallelujah, on Resurrection Sunday and on Sunday service, in our midweek service, hallelujah, instead of us coming to church, hallelujah, instead of us waking up every morning with the mindset of how I'm going to anoint the feet of Jesus, how I'm going to get into the presence of God, how I'm going to be filled by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, how I'm going to get the word of God, which, which word is God going to speak to me? We're asking questions like, how are these big things going to move in my life? Someone shout amen. And God, hallelujah, in his grace and his love and his mercy, the Bible says that there was Martha and Mary and one chose better. The one that would sit at the feet of Jesus. The one that was resting in the presence of Jesus Christ. The one that was consumed and filled by his anointing and his impartation, not the one who was working in Jesus' mighty name. And the problem with the church nowadays, hallelujah, is we are distracted, hallelujah. In fact, right now you may be sitting there and you're wondering where you're going to hide the egg so that your sobrinos don't find them. You're wondering if your aunt or auntie or your tia is going to bring the carne asada the way they said or the empanadas that they said they were going to bring, but they always flake in Jesus' mighty name. Someone shout amen. And many people have been distracted. 
distracted at the very thought that Jesus, hallelujah, has said that he is no longer dead, that he has come to resurrect, to defeat death in Jesus' mighty name, meaning every dead in your life, every stronghold in your life, every burden he took on the cross of Calvary, every condemnation of sin, every guilt fault of sin, that he defeated it in the mighty name of Jesus, hallelujah. You ought to be here this Sunday morning, not worried how you're going to move these giant boulders and these giant mountains. The word of God says, if you have faith of God, tell those mountains to move and they will move in the mighty name of Jesus. Us. That's why you can't stay quiet. That's why you can't stay silent. You got to tell those mountains to move. And you got to tell those boulders to move. You got to say, devil, you're not going to have my children. Devil, you're not going to have my finances. Devil, this isn't about Easter bunny. I bind every bunny. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. My Jesus is alive. And oftentimes in the church, if you hear the conversations of people, all they talk about, man, I got this giant boulder. I got this giant problem. I got this thing that I can't move in Jesus' mighty name. I can only imagine, hallelujah, the conversations of Mary's. They're saying, we're both going to push this way. And if we don't push that way, bring, hallelujah, the lasso. Bring, hallelujah, the suegra. Bring the neighbor. And we're all going to try to push this rock in Jesus' mighty name. And their initial thought of going to go anoint Jesus is completely eradicated. And now their only mindset and their only conversations are how these things are going to move. Someone shout amen. amen. Not knowing, listen to me now. They're worrying about how this rock is going to move and the rock's already been moved. Someone shout amen. They're worrying about how, the, how in God's name are we going to move this rock not knowing that the minute they step, hallelujah, in the presence of Jesus Christ, that the minute they get close to Jesus, that rock and that boulder and that stone has already been moved in the mighty name of Jesus. This is why on Resurrection Sunday, hallelujah, you got to tell those problems move in the mighty name of Jesus. I got to get into the presence of God. I don't got to go and get another client and make some more money. Move, God's about to open up. Finances in my business. Finances is in my house in Jesus mighty name I'm not going to die of stress I'm not going to die of worry devil you can't have my grandchildren I don't care what news I'm finding out about my family I know that God has a plan and a purpose for my family and my loved ones in the mighty name of Jesus rock move we worry about all the wrong things someone shout amen I'm preaching this morning I'm worried, huh? my marriage, my home, how are we going to pay these bills? Someone shout amen. When God says that he supplies all of our needs according to his riches and glory, that we've never seen the righteous and their children begging for bread and forsaken in Jesus' mighty name. In fact, if I'm honest, here in California, we need less bread in the mighty name of Jesus. I can barely fit into my suits, Hallelujah. Because of all the bread and all the blessings that God has poured upon me in the mighty name of Jesus, hallelujah. You in the year of 2024, you have to have the mindset that I'm going to go anoint the feet of Jesus. I'm going to go into the presence of God. I'm going to go and seek the face of God in Jesus' mighty name. And God is going to move every stone and every boulder that's blocking me from my blessing in the mighty name of Jesus. Someone shout it. If you're being blessed and I give a big shout, amen. The church is alive. Sis, how are you going to do that? I'm not worried about it. God already promised it in Jesus' mighty name. Brother, how are you going to get married and pay those bills? I ain't worried about that. I know the one that will open up the heavens on my behalf in the mighty name of Jesus. But you're going to wake up for Sunday morning service because me and my house, we serve the Lord in Jesus' mighty name. Someone shout amen. They're worrying about things that have already been done. Someone shout amen. 
when I counsel, when I sit down with people, they're worried and that worry and that fear consumes them in Jesus' name. And listen, hallelujah. In the Gospels, the angel tells Mary, why are you looking for Jesus here amongst the dead? He said, he already told you that in three days he's going to resurrect. Why are you worried about it? Someone shout amen. amen. Didn't you read in your scriptures, Jeremiah 20, 11, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you hope in the future. Why are you coming back looking for the dead? He's alive in the mighty name of Jesus. Why are you worried about how you're going to move the stones? He's alive in the mighty name of Jesus. Someone shout amen. But one thing I love about these two Marys, check this out. This is why it's crazy when people say that women shouldn't be in ministry. The devil is a liar. Hallelujah. We have women preachers in this house. We have women prophetess in this house. We have women who are on the prayer line in the mighty name of Jesus. That out of all the 12 disciples, someone shout amen. Most of the church in America are filled with women. Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me? Listen, when Jesus, listen to me now, when Jesus broke bread and gave thanks, and the Bible says there was over 5,000 men, someone shout amen. Do you want to know why the reason he mentions men? Because men are to be the providers of the home. Men are to make sure that everything in the home is going well in Jesus' name. Someone shout amen. And Jesus was showing the men that Jesus will supply all of their needs and their family's needs and their wife's needs in Jesus' mighty name. So you don't got to go chasing the bread. You got to go chasing Jesus. And out of all the 12 disciples, men of God, only the women were sensitive enough to go and anoint Jesus. Someone shout amen. The Bible says that the Sabbath was over. Passover was over. The party was over. And most people, when they leave church, you know what they do? Someone shout amen. Y'all, listen to me. Y'all, listen to me. You're, the, you're fighting with your husband. Let me get this side of the bed. Hallelujah. Y'all ain't hearing me. But when the Sabbath was over, these women said, I don't want to have a nap time with these jacked up jokers. I got to go see where Jesus is at. Hallelujah. I know, hallelujah, that something is stirring up in that tomb in Jesus' mighty name. Something on the inside of me is telling me to go to seek the presence of Christ in Jesus' mighty name. You got to allow, hallelujah, you got to bind every distraction, every Netflix, every Facebook, every Instagram, and go and anoint the feet of Jesus. Someone shout amen. I'm preaching good this morning. Are y'all with me? Hallelujah. Point number one this morning. We're just getting started. Someone shout amen. Pastor Sam, this church kind of loud. No, what's loud is when you go to the gym and you have your voice, your, your AirPods all the way loud. That's loud. Y'all ain't hear me this morning. You get mad when you don't have your AirPods going to the gym. Someone shout amen. I'm talking about I'm too loud. Someone shout amen. It's too loud. Hallelujah. I, I, I heard you pulling up in your car. My grace is great in Jesus. That's loud. Someone shout amen. I see the windows vibrating in Jesus. Boom, 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 boom. That's loud in the mighty name of Jesus. Are y'all with me? Hallelujah. They got Christian everything. Hallelujah. Some of y'all might have pulled up with da dan dan da dan dan they got some Christian. Ta -dan -tan 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 -tan. Are y'all with me? Y'all got to hear me. Someone shout amen. We're going to resurrect somebody. Are y'all with me? Give a big round of applause this morning. The church is alive. Y Cristo me ama. Hallelujah. Someone shout amen. Point number one seek the Lord. Seek the Lord and pour into Jesus while he may be found. Someone shout amen. Seek the Lord. Listen to me now. Seek the Lord and pour into Jesus while he may be found. 
The Bible says in the book of Isaiah, the scripture that says, seek the Lord while he may be found. Someone shout amen. Listen, how many here are understanding this? So we see that there was two Marys on their way to anoint the body of Jesus. Someone shout amen. But in the, in the book of Mark, chapter 14, verse 3, the word of God says this. While he was in Bethany, Jesus, reclining at the table in the home of Simon the leper, the woman, a woman, what woman? Mary of Bethany. Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me? Not, this Mary of Bethany was not anointing Jesus at the stone. Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me? Mary of Bethany came with an alabaster jar. Came with what? How did she come to Jesus? An alabaster jar, a very expensive perfume made of pure nard in Jesus' name. She broke the jar. She what? We are to be what? Broken before the Lord. We are to be broken before the Lord. We are to be broken before the Lord. Before the Lord. If you come to church, and Jesus ain't had none of that, someone shout amen. Y'all with me? It says she broke the jar. And poured the perfume on his head. Some of those present were saying indignantly to one another, Why this waste of perfume? Someone shout amen. Someone shout amen. The people, hallelujah, who were having given nothing to Jesus are always the one that complain in Jesus' name. Are y'all with me? Hallelujah. The ones who are always complaining about life, complaining about ministry, Complaining about this and that, hallelujah, are the ones that are not giving their alabaster jar or pouring themselves into Jesus. Someone shout amen. You got to get complaining and murmuring out of you in the year of 2024. Someone shout amen. And the Bible says this. Jesus said, she did what she could. She poured perfume on my body beforehand to prepare for my burial. Someone shout amen. Point number one, you have to seek Jesus and pour into him now while he may be found. Someone shout amen. Mary of Bethany, when Jesus was alive, we serve a Jesus that's alive here this Sunday morning. Jesus is alive this Sunday morning. Jesus is alive this Sunday morning. How many here have gone to a funeral service? And you see how little, all the children, everybody crying. And you ask them, oh, my God, they must have been real close to you. When's the last time you saw them? About 30 years ago. When's the last time you talked to them? About 31 years ago. Listen, if you ain't going to bless me and see me now, I don't want you crying in my funeral. My mama says this. See, if you don't love me now, don't go crying in my funeral. If you don't send me flowers now, don't go putting, don't go order uh, flowers for me at my funeral in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm speaking to somebody that Jesus is here right now. Hallelujah. Now's the time to pour into him. Now's the time to seek him. Now's the time to anoint him. Don't wait for something bad to happen in your life for you to have to call Jesus Ah, y'all ain't hear me this morning. Don't shout amen. These women, bless their heart. Bless their heart. She says, Mary, let's go anoint Jesus. And then these two Marys asked Mary of Bethany, hey, let's go anoint Jesus. You know what Mary Bethany responded? Listen, y'all too late. I already did all that. Someone shout amen. If you need some more stuff, I still got some more. Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me? Hallelujah. What is God trying to speak to you here in the year 2024? Seek him. Pour into him. Pay the price. Carry the cross. Get disciplined. Now while he's here in the mighty name of Jesus, hallelujah. Don't wait, hallelujah, for, for, for when Jesus come back for his church and we're left here. Someone shout amen. Listen, when Jesus got a hold of me at 21, eight years ago, someone shout amen. Oh, y'all, eight years ago serving the Lord. Someone shout, eight years, hallelujah, paying the price. 
eight years, hallelujah, sacrificing my time, all of my time for the Lord. What I do now, I've been doing for eight straight years. Someone shout amen. Why? Because I had a revelation by the Spirit of God. Jesus says, seek me now, serve me now, and see if I won't open up the floodgates of heaven on behalf of your marriage, on behalf of your home, on behalf of your children. See if I won't heal you from cancer, from depression, from anxiety. You got to pour in now. Don't go tell me I love you and send me flowers now that we're having a divorce. I ain't gotta, y'all, you know what? I'm going to get off this topic because th think, thinking of you should have been thinking of me all those four years you haven't said a word to me. Someone shout amen. Seek him now. What are you waiting for? You know, you know what my mindset was in the world? I'll be honest with you. My mindset was I'll serve the Lord when I'm Maybe around 40 years old, because I'm still good and young right now. So that's true. At that time, I didn't have the value that I had. Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me? Hallelujah. As you know, you got a good pastor. Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me? Hallelujah. And I said, I'm gonna, I, you know what? I'll, I'll get right with God. When I'm 40, because I would see some people in the club and some people at my work. They were about 40, and they were still looking somewhat good in Jesus' name. And that is our mindset. Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me? But when God got a hold of me, it was a supernatural encounter. It was something so, it was more real than me seeing you right now. Someone shout amen. There's nobody in this world that can tell me that Jesus is not alive in the mighty name of Jesus. Because if Jesus can transform this drunk, this alcoholic, this drug addicted, hallelujah, manipulative liar, hallelujah, and sanctify him and pour out his spirit. If God can do it for me, he can do it for you. What are you waiting for? Someone shout amen. amen. Mary of Bethany says, I already poured the oil. Your day's late in Jesus' name. And it reminds me of the ten virgins. Only five came ready filled with oil. Someone shout amen. amen. Only five took the time, paid the price, paid the bill, and came ready for the groom filled. Someone shout amen. amen. Don't be late. Don't be late. Pour in now. Man of God, you got to fight for your marriage now. You got to fight for your marriage now. You got to fight for your children now. Don't put work above God in the mighty name of Jesus. Put God I'm to you. Don't wait. Don't be like these two Marys who waited, hallelujah, until Jesus was crucified to anoint the body. Someone shout amen. If you received that this morning, give a big round of applause. Everybody. That's a word. That's a word, hallelujah. That's revelation. That's rhema. Point number two, hallelujah. The same stone or stronghold that Jesus removed in your last season, God will do it again. Someone shout amen. The same stone stronghold that Jesus removed in your last season, God will do it again. Someone shout amen. On their way to go anoint the body of Jesus Christ, their conversations change from going to anoint the body to how the stone is going to move in Jesus' name. Someone shout amen. The God who moved your stone last season, the God who paid your bills last season, the God who healed your heart and healed you from that doctor's, hallelujah, uh, uh, whatever, hallelujah, he will do it again in Jesus' mighty name. He's moved the stone before, and he'll do it again. I don't understand why so many believers get so discouraged in serving God. I don't know about you, but I have a little black book. And in that little black book, I don't have names of how many people didn't come to church on Sunday. In that black book, I have scriptures, and I've written down every miracle that Jesus Christ has done in my life. 
I know every miracle from paying every bill, from healing me from all diseases that God he does because the same stone that was in last season, he'll move it again. John 11, 39, 40. How many are being blessed this morning? Jesus said, take away the stone. He said, take away the what? Listen, you want to know why? Because when Jesus is in the atmosphere, when the presence of the Holy Spirit is close to you, the stones have to move. Someone shout amen. The Bible says that the veil was ripped open in Jesus' mighty name. Someone shout amen. This is why Jesus says, take my yoke, for it is easy. Take my yoke, for it is easy. Why? Because the minute you call on the name of Jesus, the minute you say, I bind you problem, I bind you stress, I bind you rock in Jesus' mighty name, I call on the name of Jesus who's never failed me, the God who's with me, who can be against me, almighty, you all should die, all raffle in Jesus' mighty name. He tells to move the stone, the stone got to move. What's your stone here this morning? And I'm not talking about kidney stones. He'll move those too. Come on, shout amen. He'll move those too. With the name of Jesus and a good diet, someone shout amen. Are y'all with me? I love seeing the happy faces in the house. Jesus says, take away that stone. You know what happens when stones... When we encounter stones, instead of drawing closer to Jesus, we draw back. Someone shout amen. Instead of drawing closer to Jesus, we draw back. But one thing that I listen, one thing that I love about these two mighty women of God is they knew that the stone was there, but that didn't stop them. Someone shout amen. That didn't stop them from getting as close as possible to Jesus Christ. There are two things that can happen. One thing is you encounter the stone, you see the stone and you turn back. And that stone stays there shut. The Bible says Jesus came here to break generational curses. Someone shout amen. Listen, if you don't fight those curses right now and break that stone and move that stone, it's going to stay right there. And that fight that you should have fought, now your children are going to fight it. If that stone is not moved, it's going to stay right there. Someone shout. This is why I tell people right now, listen, you don't think there are times where I get discouraged? Of course. Do you think there are times where I'm dry? Of course. Every believer, the most anointed prophet and apostle goes through that season. But you want to know what keeps me fighting? It's to understand, hallelujah, that if I don't call on the name of Jesus and that stone isn't moved, then my children and their children are going to have to move that stone in Jesus' mighty name. I'd rather sacrifice and pay the price now than have my children have to endure that stronghold. <laughs> Parents, we have to wake up. Parents, you got to wake up. For those that don't know this, you want to know what the president, I pray for the president, I'm not necessarily political, but you want to know what he declared on Resurrection Sunday? How many know what he declared? What did he declare? Trans what? I can't even say the word because they'll, they'll cancel my show. Transgender! <laughs> on Resurrection Sunday. Someone shout amen. Some of you, how to, some of you know, your, know which new Vine or, the, or new TikTok one of your followers did, but you don't even know what, the, what, what, what just happened around America. On the holiest of day, someone shout amen. You don't think that's demonic? You don't think that's the spirit of the Antichrist? The spirit of the world operating? Someone shout amen. There are some people, some parents say, well, I already lived my life. It is what it is. Your children are going to live that life. If you don't fight for your right, right now, then all that's going to affect all those that come after you. And it's going to hurt because you love them the most. Oh, 
Come on, shout amen. And our job is to pray for the leaders, but to expose the enemy. I pray for all those who are in leadership. Are y'all with me? Hallelujah. Yeah. And these two women, though, they saw that stone. They tried to figure out a way how it was going to be moved. I thank the Lord that there are women on fire. That though, hallelujah, they still got a fire up in their bones to say, I'm going to move these stones in the mighty name of Jesus. My children are going to come to know the Lord in Jesus' name. My grandchildren are going to come. I don't know how big that stone is. The stone got to move. Someone shout amen. Before I go to the next point. The Bible says that Solomon had peace all throughout his reign. How many of you guys know what I'm talking about? You want to know why? Because his father had defeated all of their enemies. Someone shout amen. This is why parents on Resurrection Sunday, you got to go and fight. There's not time to rest. Because, hallelujah, what you fight, the giants that you take out are the ones that your children will never see. Fathers, hallelujah, you're going to have children, you're going to have sons. I thank the Lord that my father, hallelujah, though he worked in a secular world, he had his business, he always prioritized the things of God. Always. My father had a Bible, a Bible library all the way in Los Angeles. He would drive every day Los Angeles, all throughout. But always make sure, hallelujah, your children are going to church, and I'm going to join them with them. Stop sending your wives alone. Stop sending your husbands alone. Go with them. Someone shout amen. Give a big round of applause in the mighty name of Jesus. If you don't let them go to the gym alone, don't let them come to church alone. Someone shout amen. Oh, I mercy. Lord, help us, Jesus. Why you got to go? I'm seeing, see if anybody's seeing you. No, you get in the church. Hallelujah. Someone give a big round of applause in the house of God. Then Jesus says, did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? That if you believe, you will see the glory of God. Someone shout amen. Did I tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? Jesus was an expert in moving stones. Whatever thing is blocking you here this Sunday morning, he is an expert at moving that in the mighty name of Jesus. He is an expert in breaking those chains in Jesus name. He is an expert on tearing down those walls in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus specializes in demolition in Jesus mighty name. Call me 411 specializing in demolition. Hallelujah. Are y'all with me? Point number three. How many are being blessed this morning? Glory. I feel the Holy Spirit in this place. God removes all difficulties. God what? Removes all difficulties. The stone which they knew and the guards which they knew not of. Someone shout amen. Hallelujah. Somebody caught that. God will remove all the stones, the ones that you know, and the guards that you don't know. You don't want to know why I serve God the way that I do? Because if he delivers me from the things that I see, how much more does he deliver me from the things that I do not see? Oh, he removes every difficulty. Someone shout amen. The Bible says, Matthew 28, 2 and 4. It says, there was a violent what? For an angel, the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb. He rolled back the stone and sat on it. Someone shout amen. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid. Give me my notes, hallelujah. The guards, give me my notes, hallelujah. On our Bible, someone shout amen. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men in Jesus' mighty name. Someone shout amen. The Bible says in the book that they went with the intention of how are these stones going to be moved. They did not know that that wasn't the only problem. Give me my camera, hallelujah. Come on, AI. Give me my problem, hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah. A round of applause for the media team this morning. I got people on Facebook and social media. I'm going to stay right here then, hallelujah. Come on now, there I am, hallelujah. The Bible says that they were speaking about 
how this stone is going to move, not knowing that there was guards set up before the tomb. Someone shout amen. Listen, God will remove every difficulty. The ones that you know of and the ones that you don't know of. In Jesus' mighty name, hallelujah. I know I'm speaking to a church, hallelujah, that God has delivered me from things that I've seen. And he's delivered me from things I don't even know about in Jesus' mighty name. That they're talking about how that stone is going to be moved. But the minute they walk into that place, everything is shifted and moved and opened. Someone shout amen. My Lord, I'm preaching this morning. What are you worried about? What are you stressed about? Listen, read it. Let's read it. Hallelujah. On our notes. It says they asked each other, Mark 16, 3. They asked each other, who will roll away the stone from the entrance of the tomb? Someone shout amen. They did not know that two guards were there. Do you want to know what? To make sure that nobody took the body or moved that stone. Someone shout amen. The angel of the Lord came and removed those guards. Someone shout amen. The Bible says that when Peter was in jail, it says not only did they lock him up, but they put him between the guards in Jesus' name. And the Bible says that the church was in prayer. The Bible says that the church was fasting, seeking the presence of God. And then an angel came supernaturally. And broke those chains and removed those guards in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. What does Resurrection Sunday mean to us? That means that he removes all obstacles. He removes all strongholds. He gets rid of your enemy in the mighty name of Jesus. Why? Because nothing can hold down the promises of God. If God promised he will heal your family. God promised he will heal your marriage. God promised he will bring revival. God promised that he will touch your children. He is not a man that he can lie. Someone shout amen. They walk up there and they see that these two guards, two bodies are there. Hallelujah. You know what they started? They started praising and worshiping the Lord. Go on. These two Marys showed up and said they saw two guards' bodies on the floor. They started to praise it. We know why? Because there's no way they're going to get through those guards. To even touch that stone in Jesus' mighty name. Someone shout amen. God is here to remove all difficult obstacles, things that you see and things that you don't see in your life in Jesus' mighty name. This is why, hallelujah, this is why it's so good for us that though there are stones, Though there are difficulties, we still go and seek the presence of Jesus Christ. We still come to church. I know some of you guys, you had a battle with your wife to come to church. You had a battle with your children to come to church. There was a fight for you to get here in Jesus' name. Some of y'all married folk might have fought before coming to church. But by the grace of God, thank God that you made it in the presence of Jesus Christ. Because God is about to deliver you and remove every obstacle that comes your way in Jesus' mighty name. In the mighty name of Jesus, he removes all difficulties. My God, hallelujah. I'm about to preach this sermon when I'm in front of a thousand people in Jesus' mighty name. You better, and you'll see me on the live or you'll have to fly there to get in one of my conferences in the mighty name of Jesus. Someone shout amen. The Bible says, hallelujah, that the angel was sitting at the right hand. Sitting on the rock. Someone shout amen. You want to know why? To make sure that no one again closed that stone. Someone shout amen. Listen, the door that God opens in your life. The stone that God, hallelujah, moves in your life. That stronghold, that chain that's broken. God sends his angels to sit on top of it. Why? Because no demon in hell. No devil's going to be able to close that door that God opened in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says you can't you can curse what God blessed. And you can't bless what God cursed. If God moved that stone, he's going to make sure that those doors are open in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. God promised me healing. By his stripes I have been healed. God promised that he supply every one of my needs. He will supply them in the mighty name of Jesus. He's sitting there to make sure no one touches that door. 
This is why when you're being tempted, the sound of divorce, the devil is putting in your mind, hallelujah. This is what you say, devil, I have an angel in my house. And God already opened up the door. We already made our vows. What God formed, let no man separate. I don't care what the studies show in the world. Here at House of Prayer Fellowship Ministries, there is 120% that those that get married stay married. You can close on that door, devil. I ain't going to let no Jezebel. I ain't going to let no Samson, the big old hunk, big old broad shoulders. I'm okay with my man. Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me? It's cold right now. I'd rather have a little belly either way. Someone shout amen. Y'all ain't hearing me. Hallelujah. The tiger blanket ain't cutting it for me. Someone shout amen. I need some carne. Hallelujah. You ain't going to have none of this, devil, in Jesus' mighty name. He makes sure that the door that God opened in your life, it stays open. That when you start to believe in God and trust in God for those new doors, those new keys to be open, he makes sure that nobody closes that door in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. This is why we ought to get excited for Resurrection Sunday. Because he is not here. He has risen. There's no need to fear. There's no need to worry in the mighty name of Jesus. That here this Sunday morning, he has come to restore you, to deliver you, and to open up new doors in your life. If you're receiving a blessing, give a big shout, amen, in this place. Point number three. I'm here being blessed this morning. Point number four, hallelujah. We're almost done. Do not fear. He was crucified. Now he is alive. Someone shout, amen. Do not fear. He has been crucified. But now he is alive. Alive in Jesus' name. In the book of Mark, chapter 4, just 16 to 46, on our first note, it says, The angel said, Do not be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was, who what? Who was crucified. Was meaning past tense. Someone shout amen. What does that mean? What does that mean for you and I this Sunday morning? That the minute that you accepted Jesus Christ as your only Lord and Savior, all your past mistakes was stayed in the past he was but now he is alive i thank the lord hallelujah i thank the lord that i don't count he don't count my mistakes he don't count my faults in jesus name that we serve a jesus that is alive hallelujah i was a drug addict i was an alcoholic i used to go party and dan, 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 but thank god god changed my playlist God changed, hallelujah, my circumstance. I used to do the dan, dan, dan. Now I do the dan, dan for Jesus and Jesus. That used to be me. The Jesus you're looking for, he was crucified. He was dead. But now he's alive. Someone shout amen. He was when they tell me, weren't you the one who used to, I was over there, now I'm over here. Bring yo over here. Someone shout amen. Can't bring up my past. It's already been forgiven, scratched. I'm as white as snow. Call me snow, hallelujah. Not snowflake, call me snow. Yeah, Jesus. That's the last thing we need to brothers call me snow. The devil is a liar. Someone shout amen. Y'all, the devil thought you won't get that word out of me in the mighty name of Jesus. We bind every zesty, fruity spirit in Jesus' mighty name. Y'all in here, I got to expose the enemy. We got men painting their fingernails and I love them. I love them. I love them. I love them. Someone shout amen. That's just not our style. Someone shout amen. Are y'all with me? If your pants are tighter than your wife's dress, then we got a problem there. Someone shout amen. I haven't seen some of y'all in church, so I got to get you now in Jesus' mighty name. They got to be loosey-goosey. 
I've been working out my thighs. You got to work on getting a bigger size. That's what you need to do. Am I preaching to somebody? Someone give a big round of applause this morning. morning. Come and shout amen. Hallelujah. Bind every zesty and fruity spirit in Jesus' mighty name. I got, I got to add that in my prayer list in the mighty name of someone. Shout, I got to add that. If you hear me say it, hallelujah. I got, I got a copycat. Go ahead, someone shout amen. He came for them too. One shout amen. Oh, Jesus, hallelujah. He's alive. That was my past life. He was crucified. What does that mean you coming to church this Sunday morning? That means that your old life. You used to not come to church, but that was my past. Now I'm bringing my wife with me. Now I'm bringing my children with me. Now I'm the bridge and all of my family's walking on that bridge to get to Jesus in Jesus' mighty name. I used to wait on Sundays for football something and baseball this and this and that. But now I'm excited to bring all of my family into the house of God. That was my life. Someone shout amen. I used to talk like a sailor. I used to drink. I used to look like, Lord have mercy. He was crucified. I'm going to shout amen. Test, listen, testimonies are good. But if you on the same testimony saying that for five years, you got to get into that word now, honey. I'm going to shout amen. And that's what they do in the, in the AA. Someone shout amen. Well, for those that know me, I, I, I was in a, I had a DUI. My car flipped over five times on a freeway. That's the only way they caught me. I was doing drive all the time. Someone shout amen. The only way they caught me was when my car flipped over off the off ramp. I missed a tree to split the car in half by this much. So when I finally got caught, someone shout amen. The judge says, you're going to the meetings. By the grace of God, I was already saved. And I would have to sit in the meetings. And everybody used to tell about their own story. And by, by, by the two weeks, I sat there, I said, I've heard everybody's story already. And they're just repeating it. Someone shout amen. And finally, I was there because I had to be there. Hallelujah. Someone shout amen. You, listen, you know what I learned about that group? They're, they're gathering for an hour and a half, seven days a week. And we can't get to church on a Wednesday and a Sunday. Uh, Y'all ain't got to say nothing. There are men who have businesses. They have workers, over 300, and make sure they don't miss a meeting. But I can't get you to get here on Wednesday. Oh, now it's quiet. Now, now I get it. I get it. Now it's quiet. Ah, okay. So don't give me that excuse, okay? The Muslims, you know what they do? When it's time to pray, they stop their car, they bring out their mats, and right there they're praying. In their work and in their business. But when I don't see you on a Wednesday and I text you, Pastor, I couldn't make it. I got to get you right now. It's Easter Sunday. We're in a good spirit. Someone shout amen. Someone give a big round of applause in the mighty name of Jesus. And I went in there in that meeting. And I said, listen to all of you. If you're going to have me talk, I'll say this. Jesus Christ died for my sins. What I used to do has been wiped away in Jesus' name. I'm not an alcoholic. I'm not a drug addict. I'm no longer talking about my past. Jesus Christ has opened up a new door. He's moved the stones. He is alive in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm not going to talk about my past. I'm going to talk about what Jesus can do for your future. And you better, I went up there and I preached Jesus to him. Someone shout amen. Why? Because he's alive. How many here are being blessed? Ten more minutes and I'm done. Luke 25, 5, it says, the angel says to Mary, in their fright, the woman bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, the angels, why do you look for the living amongst the dead? Someone shout amen. He says, why do you look for the living amongst Amongst the dead in Jesus' mighty name. Are y'all with me? Hallelujah. Why are you looking for the living where dead people are at in Jesus' mighty name? He's no longer here. He has risen. 
He is alive in Jesus' name. Listen, you want to know why the angel had to open up that stone? Listen to me now. It wasn't because the only way Jesus can come out of that stone was if it was open. He was already out of it. Someone shout amen. Nothing can hinder or stop the presence of the Holy Spirit and presence of Jesus. You want to know why he opened up that stone? Is so that you and I can see that he promised what he promised he will do in Jesus' mighty name. Someone shout amen. And he says, why do you fear? You're looking for one that's alive amongst the dead. He says in the book of Revelations 1.18, I am the living one. I was dead. And now look, I am alive. I was dead. And now look, now I am alive. He says, I, 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 someone got to clap that in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm alive forever and ever. And I hold the keys of death and of Hades in Jesus' mighty name. Don't be scared. Do not fear. Don't worry about what people might think. Don't worry about what people might say. My Jesus is alive. He's alive forever and ever in Jesus' mighty name. If God before you, then who can be against you? Come on up here, worship team. He's alive forever in Jesus' mighty name. He's alive forever. He defeated death. Someone shout amen. He defeated every stronghold, every obstacle, every plan and scheme of the enemy. He has defeated it in Jesus' mighty name. Last point, and this rounds up my sermon. If you've been blessed, someone shout amen. amen. Give a big round of applause in the mighty name of God. The sermon title was, Go Tell the One Who Is Hurting. He has risen. Go to book to the book. Go, go to Mark chapter 16, verse 7. How many here have been blessed? Mark 16, 7. The word of God says this. Verse 7. Are y'all with me? It says, But go tell his disciples and who? And Peter. He is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. What did the angel say? He told the two women, Go. And tell the disciples and go and tell who? What did Peter do? You know what Peter did? Peter denied Jesus. Jesus, Peter said, Jesus, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. But the Bible said, when the rooster crows three times, you will deny me. And let's be honest now. Not in this church, but in this church. How many times have we promised something to Jesus and we haven't fulfilled it? Someone shout amen. I love, listen, listen, listen. Jesus specifically, the angel says specifically, go tell the disciples, but one person particularly. Peter, the one who denied me, the one who I love. Go tell Peter. You know what God told me to tell somebody here this morning? He said, go tell those Peters that you were once on fire. You were once planted in the house of God. You once had your first love. But something happened. And you turned away from Jesus. You know what Resurrection Sunday for us means? It means resurrection power and restoration power. That God here this Sunday morning, he's saying, I want to call you. Specifically, Peter, I want to call you who, 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 who said you were going to serve the Lord, but never did. I want to restore my relationship and my, rela and, and, and my covering with you. I want to restore you in Jesus' name. And that leads me, hallelujah, my last point. Many are being blessed this morning. Resurrection Sunday, where Jesus restores you. And your relationship with him. Someone shout amen. What does he is risen mean? What does resurrection Sunday mean? It means he restores his relationship with you. That you might have denied him. 
that may, you might have got baptized and not come back in Jesus' name. But Jesus tells me to tell you, I'm going to you. I leave the 99 for that one in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. How many here are receiving that this morning? John chapter 21, verse 3 and 4. Someone shout amen. You know, Peter didn't, I mean, Jesus didn't just send a text. Jesus went to Peter. Someone shout amen. And you want to know what God is doing here this Sunday morning? He's going to you. Someone shout amen. He's going to you this morning. And he says here in verse 3, it says, I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them. What did Peter go do? Where did Jesus bring Peter out of? Someone shout amen. Listen, this is what happens when we leave Jesus. Listen, listen, listen. Help me, help, help me out, piano player, my brother. When we leave Jesus, we go back to the things that Jesus took us out of. Someone shout amen. This is why, hallelujah, you can't risk not getting serious with God. You can't risk it. Peter says, I'm going back fishing. Why, hallelujah? Because when we turn our back to Jesus Christ, we turn back to those things that he delivered us from. Someone shout amen. We go back to those same friends. We go back, hallelujah, talking the same way, listening to that same old music. We go back, hallelujah, being disrespectful, not reverencing the Lord. We go back. We go back to not praying. We go back to not going to church. And he says they went, going, they went fishing. Someone shout amen. Titan Hebrew, don't go back. Come to Jesus. And it says here, hallelujah, and the disciples said, we'll go with you. If I was one of those disciples, I would have said, Peter, I ain't going fishing with you. I'm going to shout amen. There's some people, some brothers, hey, let's go here. And all the brothers, yeah, all right, let's go. The devil, is, let's go to pray. Iron sharpens iron. We ain't going fishing. No, I love to go fishing with my brother Frankie. But ain't that fishing. Someone shout amen. No, you got to get around disciples, men and women of God. They're going to challenge you. We're not going back. We're moving in the mighty name of Jesus. Pastor, there's nobody. I'm, here's the mighty one of God here. There's men here. The church is filled of men and women of God who are going to fan the flame of the gift of God on the inside of you. And it says, early in the morning, so they went out and got onto the boat. But that night, they caught what? They caught what? Look, look at the, the lies of the devil. Look at the devil. I got, I got to go work, hallelujah, not come to church. They caught nothing. Why, hallelujah? Because without Jesus, we can do nothing. Without Jesus, we can never do nothing. You only go as far. Someone shout amen. All right, I got to end it nicely. I, I, I'm not going to go that way. I'm not going to someone shout amen. It says, early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore. But the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. What happens when we turn away from Jesus? We, don't, we do not know that he's close to you. Someone shout amen. We are not sensitive to his spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. Listen, when we turn away from God, we come to church and we don't feel nothing. Someone shout amen. The worst feeling is going to the church where everybody else is crying in the presence of God. And you're sitting there like this. Why? Because you've turned your back to Jesus. And God is telling you to come back in Jesus' name. Someone shout amen. We're almost done. I got to finish up. It says here, verse 7, 6, 7, it says, He said, throw your net. Jesus said, throw your net on the right side of the boat. And you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Someone shout amen. Then the disciples whom Jesus wrapped his outer garment, the disciples uh, uh, whom Jesus loved said, Peter, it is the Lord. Someone shout amen. It is who? As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, it is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garments around him that he had taken off and he jumped into the water. What is Resurrection Sunday? What is Jesus trying to do here this Sunday morning? He's telling you, it is the Lord. It is the Lord who is calling you. 
And Peter, hallelujah, the minute he heard that Jesus was calling him, he dropped everything and he jumped into the water to go and be with the one whom his heart loved in Jesus' mighty name. Resurrection Sunday is where your relationship is restored with Jesus. And last scripture, and we could stand to our feet. We could dim the lights, hallelujah. Jesus says this. Listen, if, 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 you, if you feel this Sunday morning, if you feel like, man, I, I've messed up, pastor. Man, hallelujah, I've turned my back away from God. I got to come back to that first love in Jesus' name. Man, I feel, hallelujah, like things are working out. I'll leave you with the scripture and I'll pray and then we're done. John 10, 20 and 29. Jesus says, I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. Someone shout amen. No one will snatch them out of my hand. Someone shout amen. My father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my father's hand here on this Sunday resurrection Sunday Jesus goes to the one who is hurting and declares to you that he has risen in Jesus name lift up your hands I want you to close your eyes in Jesus name and imagine Jesus calling you this Sunday morning And saying, hallelujah, take that step of faith. Say, Lord, today you restore my relationship with you. Say this morning, Jesus' mighty name. Say, Lord, I'm sorry. For this. Say, in the name of Jesus. Jesus' mighty name. Say this Sunday on resurrection. Relationship to be restored. Jesus say this Sunday morning hallelujah I'm not going to wait for Jesus to, I'm going to anoint the feet of Jesus say this Sunday morning I'm going to seek I'm not going to wait for tomorrow I'm going to wait for Wednesday I'm not going to wait in the mighty name of Jesus now that he is found in Jesus say this Sunday morning Every stone is moved, Jesus. Every stone in your stone in your marriage, every trouble that the devil has placed upon Jesus, say stone, Jesus, Jesus, say stone, Jesus, say every stone. Every strong has to move. Say it has to move. Every chain has to move. Say every chain has to move. Say every chain has to be broken. Chain is broken.